This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Everybody, how are you? What's happening? How's uh, uh, how's everything? How's it going? I'm Alex. Hi there. Yeah, I don't have my big light on over there tonight, so maybe it looks good anyway, right? Okay. Anyway, how are you? Uh, this is a, a Tuesday, and we go until uh, midnight tonight. Yes, midnight tonight. That's midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time. Let me turn on. The on the air sign, so girlfriend won't get mad at me because she bought me this sign, and she absolutely has to make sure it gets lit. See it back there? Okay. That's if you're watching us on uh, on uh, on on uh, Facebook Live, uh, and I suggest you watch it using Safari <laughs> because I find that at least it uh, it's the picture stays constant on Safari, where for me it constantly blacks out. Uh, on, uh, I'm just looking to see various things here to make sure they're all on. Well, it's still going strong, so on, on uh, what do you call it, the Google Chrome, as it were. Uh, things I want to talk to you about tonight, I'm not going to, we don't have a little guest tonight or anything like that. Let me turn on the fan so I get a little breeze here. Um, uh, but there are a couple of things I want to talk about. First of all, we, we, we had an incident here in New York, which uh, became the main story uh, and the big story. And that was that we had a uh, ISIS wannabe uh, rent a truck from uh, Home Depot. I bet the Home Depot doesn't like this kind of publicity. And uh, plus, uh, they're going to make sure this guy doesn't get his deposit back. Um he rented a truck from Home Depot, went down uh, towards uh, City Hall. He's going down uh, between Houston, and I don't know exactly where he did this. Uh, I'm trying to figure it out. But he just went down a bike lane and started mowing down bikers. Uh, and then he got out of his car, yelled, uh, uh, Ali Akbar, or whatever they say. And uh, he then uh, pulled out. Uh, two implements which appeared to be guns. One was a BB gun and the other was a paintball gun. Boy, this is a real ISIS loser, right? Um, but he, before he was through, he took eight people's lives here in Manhattan, and that's the sad part of the story. You know, people who today went to work or they decided to take themselves out for a bike ride and just figured it was going to be another nice day and were planning for a nice evening, and now they can't plan for anything and they're dead. And, uh, you know, this is happening way too much in this world now. It seems to be a regular uh, 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 occurrence that keeps going on and on and on and on and on. And, uh, it, you know, it happened in France and it happened in Britain and it's happened in, it happened in Barcelona uh, and it's happened in a lot of different places. And uh, we're now here in New York City not exempt from this sort of thing. Uh, we had other ISIS-type related incidents in, uh, where was it? Was it New Mexico or Arizona? I can't remember. And then, of course, there was a thing down in Miami uh, that happened at the gay uh, uh, club down there. Uh, and um, I'm trying to think of uh, what other incidents we've had. But we do have a president now, uh, Donald J. Trump, who uh, uh, has... Um, said that, you know, he's going to be tough on ISIS and he's going to be tough on this sort of thing and he's going to make sure we're safe from all of this. And this happened on his watch. It's the first one to happen on his watch. Um, uh, the nice part of me was hoping that no one would ever, ever be part of this uh, and be subject to this this sort of thing. Uh in the United States. And the other part of me went, well, if it does, at least we can blame Donald Trump. And, and I think that we have to take this into account. This is a guy who has been yelling and screaming that he's closing the borders and he's doing this and he's doing that and he's not doing shit because there are eight people dead now. 
Am I going to blame that on him? Not any more than I would blame all those other incidences on Obama or on George Bush or I don't think there were any under, under Clinton because this didn't become the cars didn't, uh, and trucks did not become the weapon of choice, okay? So um, uh, I, I, it's sad, and I had to make note of it tonight. But I'll tell you what gets to me. Whenever something like this happens, uh, to begin with, my favorite show doesn't run, which is TMZ. It runs at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And any time there's any kind of a major thing like this that happens during the day, every station starts covering it. They, and they don't stop covering it. They keep covering it over and over and over again. Now, you know, there's an incident, and something happens, and I think you need to report it, of course. It's important. And maybe you need to report it a second time for those people who are just tuning in to get the story. Maybe I have to do it one more time because there may be people who didn't get it the time you just did it so that people would get the story, so that another group of people get the story. But by the time you've reached uh, three, four hours of this reporting, I think there's a point at which you say, well, we're, that ends our broadcast for now, but when we have new details, we'll get back to you. You can be assured of that. No, they just keep talking. And they only maybe have five minutes worth of information, okay? The only piece of information that improved from what we had in the very beginning was that we got the name of the guy who did it. Okay, we got the name of the guy. Uh, and uh, so now we know who did it. And it was a guy who was a, uh, uh, from Uzbekistan, I think. I may be wrong, okay. Uh, but I think he was an Uzbek. And uh, he claimed uh, in a note that he was doing this in the name of ISIS, you know. But, I mean, ISIS didn't arrange for it. ISIS just encourages people around the world to uh, uh, in, in, invest in this kind of behavior, okay? But they go on and on with the story, and it should, they keep telling it over and over again. And then all of a sudden, I start getting my basic entertainment by sitting there dissing the news people as they're reporting it. Because then they start reporting it, they're trying to fill time. Let me turn up the fan a little bit here. Uh, they, 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 they're trying to fill time, and so they're filling it with uh, with information that isn't really information. Like, for instance, uh, there's one reporter, this was a great remark, said that, uh, 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 what's her name, um, uh, Melania Trump was in Manhattan today, and how close she may have come to that whole thing because it was only four miles away. Now, let me explain something to you. If you live in um, upstate New York, Four miles is just down the road, okay? If you live in Manhattan, four miles isn't exactly in the center of what happened. In fact, it's not even close. They didn't even come close to you. It's not like this guy drew, drove down Fifth Avenue first mowing people down and happened to pass Trump Tower and then got all the way downtown. No, and, and so her saying, and you, you know, it, it was very close to Trump Tower, four miles away. Yeah, well, uh, I think 9-11 took place about four and a half miles away from Trump Tower, and somehow it was never affected uh, by, uh, uh, by the whole thing. So, you know, I, the way in which they just report this and over and over and over again with the same facts, and, and what if this had happened, and what if that had happened, and boy, aren't we, you know, we got caught the guy, and da, 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 boring, 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 until finally... They take all the terror and all the, the gut-wrenchingness out of the news. In other words, I should feel real bad about this thing. I should feel really upset about it. But because I'm so pissed off at the way it was reported, and it was so overdone, and then by the end of the afternoon, I was so saturated by it that it numbed me. It numbed me to what had gone on. You know, I just think these news people should not be acting so stupidly when, they, when they're reporting. Because they go out to these people in the field and, uh, you know, they had this one reporter and she lives in the area. And her kid goes to, I think, the school that was affected by it. And she mentioned that. 
But she's then the one who just made the stupid remark about Melania Trump being four miles away. I mean, come on. Come on. You know, and then and there were a lot of other. I can't even remember some of the real stupid stuff that was going on and being said and 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 uh, uh, trying to make us, you know, tug at our heartstrings. And I just, you know. But anyway, uh, uh, no, my my thoughts and prayers don't go out to the uh, families of the victims because I don't know them, and so I can't give them my thoughts and prayers. But I can feel, hey. You know, this is not a nice thing, and, and this shouldn't happen to any American family, and it shouldn't happen to any American. And uh, what is it we're doing in this world that makes people want to do something like that? And how do we defuse that? What do we do to defuse it? Because, you know, she just keeps going on and on. And these, all these things are, are basically ISIS wannabes, people who are, I guess, so disaffected in their lives. Um, that they uh, uh, that they do something like this, that they they need to have some kind of passion and fervor, and I'm going to go do this for ISIS. Well, you know, wouldn't do anything for ISIS. You know, if you want to do something for your people, go out and raise some money to help them because they're starving in a lot of the countries that you 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 want to protect. Okay. Anyway, I I'm babbling here, but. Um, it's it's just terrible, you know, that this thing keeps going on. And it's not getting any better under Trump. Now he's going to claim, well, it's because I didn't, uh, uh, because they wouldn't pass all his laws uh, allowing me to keep these people out of the country. Well, it wouldn't have helped with this guy. He was here in 2010. He got a green card and was working and he went to school. And then I think he got tired of school uh, no, 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 that was somebody else I was talking to. It was another immigrant. But anyway, this guy was here in, in 2010. He lived in New Jersey. Okay, so whatever Trump would want to do would not affect this guy one iota, and he still would have been able to do what he did. So that shows you how effective all these propositions that dear Donald Trump uh, has. Uh, it, uh, it's just not, it's not working, Donald, not working. Not working at all. All right. Okay. Enough said. I'm gonna. Th this I'm also very mad about. This was gonna be my big thing. Um, Patrick, who is one of the callers to our, fa our citizens panel, uh, sent me a thing by messenger on Facebook the other day, and he said, "This is it. This is the last straw." Um, and it was a story about Kevin Spacey. Now, in case you're not aware of the Kevin Spacey story, let me just reiterate what happened. Uh, an actor uh, who works on uh, Star Trek uh, uh, Discovery uh, and uh, was a, a, a child actor in the Broadway theater years ago. I wish I had his name here in this story, and I don't, uh, I don't see his name right now, and I can't remember it. Um, but he, he made the assertion that Kevin Spacey, when he was 14 years old, uh, had attempted to have sex with him. Now, here, here's what supposedly happened. Uh, Kevin Spacey was appearing in a show off on Broadway, and so was this kid in another play. So afterwards... Um, Spacey decides to hold a party, either at his hotel or his apartment, I don't know, whatever. And uh, uh, a lot of people come back, including this 14-year-old kid, who then gets, bo according to him, got bored and went into Kevin Spacey's bedroom and started watching television. All right, now, first of all, the question is, what was a 14-year-old kid doing uh, showing up at a party being attended basically by adults. And where were the parents of this kid saying, hey, no, you can't go to that party. You're 14, it's past your bedtime, okay? But no, he was at this party, okay? And according to this guy, God, I wish I had his name here. It should, it's not even in the story any longer. Um, and he's, as I say, he plays about the fourth, fifth role on Star Trek Discovery. 
And he was also in Rent, uh, the movie. And I think he was on, in Rent on Broadway as well. But anyway, the kid was 14. So he claims that Kevin Spacey uh, was drunk, okay, shit-faced shit drunk, came into the room, saw the kid there, hopped on the bed, and then jumped on him. And he didn't like that idea at all, the kid. And he squirmed out from under him and got up and left. Okay. Now, mind you, Kevin Spacey didn't stick his dick in anything. Uh, he maybe was so drunk he didn't know this boy was 14 years old. He didn't care. It just looked like another human being to him that seemed to be fair game. Um, let's say that actually happened. You know, in all these cases lately, we only have the word of the person telling the story, but somehow just the telling of the story make, takes these guys and, and makes them uh, a pariah in the industry. Now, you would think that people would go, okay, well, now this kid is telling a story. This thing happened 30 years ago, by the way. Spacey was 26, okay? Uh, this happened 30 years ago. Uh, so uh, uh, BuzzFeed got the story and the guy told the story and I don't know, maybe he wants publicity or whatever. What's the motivation for suddenly telling the story? All these years it's been building up and it's been pent up and you just have to tell the story. And uh, uh, the sum total of it was uh, Netflix, who is the outfit that plays House of Cards, which is Kevin Spacey's big show, says we're canceling the show. It has one season uh, that's already in production, and we're going to let that go on, but then we're going to uh, we're going to cancel the show. Well, rumors were they were going to cancel it anyway. The thing's gone six seasons. You know, how far can you go with that scenario? There were rumors, and there still are rumors, that they, they plan to do more House of Cards, but with other people being the president of the United States or, or, or being another political time, as it were. So they cancel show. Now, it, it, you know, it, even if they were planning on it, they felt compelled to make the statement not one day later, not two days later, not a week later or a month later that they were going to cancel the show, they decided they wanted to get the stink off of them fast, and so they canceled it 12 hours after these allegations, okay? Now, uh, uh, people say, well, you know, uh, Kevin Spacey admitted to doing this, and the fact was he didn't admit to shit. What he said was, he said, I don't remember the incident. If I was drunk and I did this, then I humbly apologize. But the kid never said he was actually raped. He was accosted, all right? So now we've got Netflix canceling uh, the thing. I, write, I, I got on the chat line to uh, Netflix, and I said, uh, I think it's terrible what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. And the person there said, well, we have no knowledge of Netflix canceling House of Cards. And I wrote back, I said, well, you're probably not high up enough in the ladder because this thing had already gone on deadline in uh, Hollywood. So, uh, and and the, the, the story was released by Netflix. But Netflix wasn't going to cancel the one that runs next year, okay? Uh, today comes another story. Filming on season six of the acclaimed Netflix series House of Cards has been suspended amid allegations of sexual misconduct by the show's star, Kevin Spacey. The move comes a day after Netflix announced that it was canceling the series at the end of season six. In a joint statement, Netflix and Media Rights Capital said, MRC and Netflix have decided to suspend production of House of Cards season six until further notice to give us time to review the current situation and to address any concerns of our cast and crew. What concerns? They want to get paid, okay? I mean, this is trying to cover your ass. Now, mind you, all of this, you know, Kevin Spacey's career is right now, at, as of this moment, dead in the fucking water. Now, I don't know whether he did this or not, and neither do you, 
and neither does Netflix, and neither does uh, MRC, the uh, company that's working with Netflix in producing House of Cards. They don't know any of that, but they do know they want to get the stink off them as fast as possible. So what's happening here is that Kevin Spacey's career is perhaps forever ruined, not because of something he definitely did, but because of an allegation and an innuendo. He didn't even do the kid in his endo. So, you know, it doesn't matter. It's a little joke, okay? Point I'm making here, and the point I want to I want to I want to express more than any other, is that this reminds me of McCarthyism. This has gotten to the point of just absolute insanity where these people are suddenly finding the witches in Salem, right? Who, uh, who, are, who took a bunch of teenage girls and made them go crazy. And so now they're going, uh, Salem witch trials killed like 20 people. They hung them. This is a Salem. This is a McCarthy era. This is a rampage that has started and doesn't appear to stop because anybody who wants publicity, anybody who wants to get on the radar uh, makes accusations. And some of them may be true. And some of them may not be true. But for the ones that it's true, I feel sorry for them. Because all of this is diminishing their pain, their sorrow, and their case against whoever they were accusing of this. So this Kevin Spacey thing is, is really insane because even Spacey can't remember it going on. Spacey said, you know, I could have been drunk, and if it did happen, I, uh, I strongly apologize. But then again, this kid wasn't raped. He was just pounced upon, and I would imagine Spacey then passed out somewhere on that bed. So, you know, it, it's, it's a non-story that has ruined a man's career, okay? Ruined his career. Not that he hasn't had a good one, and, you know, maybe it's time to retire and whatever. AP also notes, notes that Netflix has a Gore Vidal biopic in production that stars Spacey. Netflix has not commented on its plans for the project since the allegations service, surfaced. Now, here's the problem also, though, with the whole thing with Kevin Spacey. In trying to double down and trying to frame the thing, the whole situation, and in order to try and, and uh, mitigate the circumstances or whatever, he made a big mistake. He took this incident as the predication to announce that he was gay. Oh my gosh, Kevin Spacey's gay? Who would have thought? Look, for years everybody's been... been been talking about that one. Hey, is Kevin Spacey's gay, isn't he? I mean, he, yeah. Uh, in fact, I knew he was gay because I had a guy here, uh, I won't say who he was, who's now dead, comedian, uh, who at one time was for quite a while Kevin Spacey's uh, boyfriend. All right? So I knew about it, you know. But he made the, he chose this incident to make the announcement, and now the entire gay community is on his case saying that. Uh, you use this, uh, you know, you use that to announce that you were coming out when you've never announced you were gay before. And now what you're doing is you're doing it in the uh, atmosphere of charges of pederasty. And this is what everybody likes to believe is that gay guys want to go after your young kid. And the answer is in, most, is, is in, in the majority, majority, majority of cases, no. But, that, but by announcing you were gay, you gave credence to that. Well, I don't know. You know, I mean, I'm sure for years they were down on him because he wouldn't come out publicly. And now that he came out publicly, he did it at the wrong moment. So, you know, I'm not gay. I have no um, um, dog in this fight. And so, therefore, I'm not even going to begin to... Uh, uh, make a judgment on that. But that's what, what makes him uh, uh, the gay community so mad at, uh, at uh, Kevin Spacey. 
he could have maybe not said he was gay, done that later on. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm gay, okay? Uh, he, he also said he, he has had uh, relationships with men and women, and now at this point in his life, he chooses to live his life as a gay man. So, yeah, whatever, whatever. Anyway, here's... Here, so uh, this unleashes a whole body of people accusing other people of, of uh, sexual harassment and sexual improprieties and rape and all kinds of things. So let's, let's look at some of the ones that have just come in in the last couple of hours. I'm not kidding you about this. Hollow, uh, this is, again, from Deadline Hollywood. Uh, excuse me, this is, no, this is from, uh, what is this from? This is from... Uh, Oh God, I forget the name of it. I, I read it every day. It's it's a it's a uh, it, it's a it's a showbiz uh, broadcast uh, site. Hollywood's widening sexual harassment crisis brought forth a second actor's allegation against Kevin Spacey on Tuesday. Uh, they halted production of the Netflix series. Mexican actor Robert Cavazos wrote on his Facebook page that he encountered Spacey. At a bar in London's Old Vic Theatre, where Spacey was the artistic director, and the actor tried to fondle him against his will. Spacey was reportedly artistic director of uh, the Vic from uh, 2004 to 2015. He was, actually. The theatre issued a statement day expression in deep dismay. Meanwhile, CBS, which airs... Uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Yeah. Uh, which... which Ayers Piven's drama series, Wisdom of the Crowd, said today it's looking into a claim by an actress and reality personality, Ariane Belmar, that the former Entourage star groped her on two occasions. Belmar began tweeting about the alleged incidents Monday. Belmar has appeared in Suicide Squad and Hangover Part 2, Part 3 rather, and one incident occurred in Piven's trailer on the Entourage set, and another took place, get this, at the Playboy Mansion. Oh, yeah, okay, at the Playboy Mansion. She was at a party at the Playboy Mansion, and she was groped by Jeremy Piven. Now, is this going to ruin Piven's career? Who knows? But it's a he said, she said. It's a wannabe versus a fairly successful actor. Uh, who can benefit by the publicity. Yet, CBS is looking into the allegations. Now, whether they'll do anything about it, I don't really know. I think it depends on how successful the show is in the ratings, and I haven't looked. Now, another case. NPR is investigating allegations by two women who said the head of its news department made unwanted physical contact with him while he was employed by another news organization nearly two decades ago. That's two, count them, two, two decades ago. It's amazing. Two decades. Um... Uh, uh, he was employed by a news organization two decades ago. The women, both journalists at the time of the alleged incidents, made the accusations in recent weeks against Michael Oreskes, senior vice president of news and editorial director of the Washington-based public broadcasting organization. The women reportedly spoke to the Washington Post on the condition of anonymity. That he makes it even worse because now you don't even know who they are. Uh, NPR confirmed today that it has placed Oreskes on indefinite leave in separate complaints at the time the Washington Bureau Chief of the New York Times abruptly kissed them while they were speaking with him about working at the newspaper. Both of them told similar stories after meeting him and discussing job prospects. Okay. Um, God, I hope I, I don't, it, it doesn't come home to roost that any of the women in my lifetime who I got a little too close to and attempted to kiss and then maybe was rebuffed and then didn't try to kiss after that, aren't going to now come after me, okay? Now, here's the one that really is going to put a lot of, a lot of spring in your step because this is almost hilarious. 
Another actor accused of inappropriate behavior has been fired amid the backdrop of Hollywood's widening sexual harassment uh, scandal. People, re- I'm not going to tell you who yet. People reports that he was fired from the indie film Raising Buchanan. He's 51 years old now, and he reportedly, are you ready, groped, kissed, and licked people's cheeks and made sexual proposals. Uh, the Hollywood Reporter and uh, it was not able to that uh, was not able to reach out to the alleged victims. However, two sources detailed this actor's inappropriate behavior, which included groping people's genitals, unwanted kissing, licking, and sexual proposals. Uh, did I just read all this, or did they do this twice? Yeah, they did this twice. And at least four uh, pro- uh, propositions to at least four members of the production. It's unclear if those involved were actors or crew. Do you want to know who this guy is? This, 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 you wouldn't expect this out of this guy. That's what's so amazing. It's Andy Dick. Yeah. Uh, are you surprised that Andy Dick licked somebody on the cheek? Or made a proposal? Or uh, groped somebody's genitals? How many, that's, that's all part of Andy Dick's act, for Christ's sake. It's amazing. He said, he said, uh, he, he says, I, uh, but uh, the Hollywood Reporter notes that Dick was well aware of his reputation and says he's cleaned up his act. I don't grope people anymore. I don't expose myself anymore, he told the Hollywood Reporter. Now, where, who, the, all these allegations, for instance, against uh, Bob, uh, not Bob, uh, by Harvey Weinstein, uh, really one of the main people uh, in this whole scenario who's been speaking out and talking about it at great length is Rose McGowan. And she continues to make headlines after learning a felony arrest warrant has been issued for her on drug possession. She recently accused Harvey Weinstein of raping her, appeared uh, to draw a connection between the two developments, right? I'm being, yeah, right. Harvey's got enough power now that he can get the people down in Florida to issue a warrant of arrest against you. Uh, CNN quotes a statement from the Metropolitan... Oh, Washington, excuse me. Not, not my aunt, not Florida. CNN quotes a statement from the Metropolitan Washington Airport's police department saying on February 1st, 2007, Metropolitan Washington Airport's Authority Department obtained an arrest warrant for Rose McGowan an actress from Encino, California, for possession of a controlled substance. The felony charge stems from police investigation of personal belongings that tested positive for narcotics and were left behind on United Flight 653 arriving in Washington Dulles Airport on January 20th, 2017. The statement adds, since obtaining the warrant in February, Airports Authority police have attempted to contact Ms. McGowan so she can appear at Loudoun County, Virginia to respond to the charge, The arrest warrant was also entered into a national law enforcement database. CNN notes that McGowan has become one of Harvey Weinstein's most high-profile accusers in one of the biggest scandals, which was found the mute mogul accused by more than 60 women of acts of harassment. The report notes that McGowan delivered a speech Friday at the Women's Convention in Detroit, and she reportedly told the gathering, I've been silenced for 20 years, I have been slut-shamed, have been harassed, have been maligned, and you know what? I'm just like you. Yeah, but you didn't leave drugs on a plane, and uh, the police aren't, didn't send out a warrant for you, and you didn't answer that warrant, and so now you're in trouble, Rose. So, you know, even the accusers have their problems, okay? So, anyway, what I'm sick of, that's all the stories I have, but there'll be more tomorrow until we... We kind of get off of this whole binge that we've been on uh, going after all these people. It's become like a national obsession, right? Yes, absolutely a national obsession. Uh, and it's, it's terrible. But anyway, so where was I? So uh, I just think it's terrible, you know. And I, I, I listen, anybody who inappropriately acts towards a woman or a guy is a creep. 
and should be treated as such. But to suddenly react to stories which could be true or not be true, to suddenly uh, cancel somebody's TV show or put a show on suspension because of the allegations of somebody who may not be telling the truth or may be exp expanding the truth, as it were. Um, it's, it's, it's disgusting because it goes against everything that I was taught is that you are innocent until proven guilty. But apparently that's not the case here. And we are living in a new era of the McCarthy era. This is the new form of this sort of thing. And it's, uh, it's terrible. It's just terrible. Anyway, here I am. I just opened the line so that people can call and talk to me. Uh, gee, we got more viewers uh, just by me sitting here talking than we normally do. And uh, part of the problem was I think that some people have, have Chrome browsers and it peters out on a Chrome browser. But on Safari browsers, this show uh, works quite well on Facebook Live. So I have something nice to say about an Apple browser now. Uh, anyway, I have the lines open. You can call me. Uh, maybe you want to talk about this stuff. Uh, uh, I certainly did. I took 40 minutes of this program that it essentially was a monologue, or 35 minutes. Mm. Mm. So anyway, you know, uh, let me see here. Uh, I see that some people are starting to come online. Now all I have to do is wait for them to call, and we can uh, uh, start our little, uh, our little um, um, thing here. Oh, here we go. Here comes Jeff Stein, ladies and gentlemen. He is the first one to call tonight. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Good. How are you today? I'm fine. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah. Move your camera a little bit so your face is kind of in the center of the frame. That would be nice. I'll yeah. Say, yeah. Good. That's good. That's good. Anyway, I don't know why, but I don't see my own picture. Here. Oh, I see. There I am. Yeah. Yeah. You make my, yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. You're adjusting it fine. And uh, here comes uh, here comes Phil Meyer. And uh, I noticed that Patrick is online, which means he'll be calling any minute. He was the guy that turned me on to this story the other day. And when I saw it, I was just, just at, like he was, appalled at this story. Um, and um, it's time for it then. Here comes Patrick. Let me add him to the, to the group. Hello, Patrick. How are you? I am just wonderful. Thank you for sending me that thing the other day, because I was not aware of it until you sent it to me. Well, I I did it because it just broke, and I figured I had a, at least a 50% shot of giving you news that wasn't old like everybody else does. So y Yeah. And and the funny part about it was you gave it to me on like a Saturday or something where I had like three days before I could go on the on on the air and talk about it, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I, um, I, I, are you, you, you were just as appalled as I have been, right? Well, I mean, look, you you said it correctly, and many people have said it. If if I would part of the gay community, I would be upset with him for the way he he maybe inadvertently tied him being gay to the incident. Right. But then what annoys me is he's automatically guilty because it's an accusation. And the thing is, what I, I would think, I, in fact, my folks were here yesterday, and we were talking about this, and I said, you know, I remember at the company I used to work for, yeah. uh, I used to compliment the ladies if they had a new outfit or a new haircut. I'd be scared shitless to do this now um, <laughs> because you don't know who's got a burr up their ass that, you know, today's going to be I'm going to file a sexual harassment thing, and they don't even have to have proof. You know, they could just say, well, Patrick said this, and in fact, all I did was say, nice sweater. You know, I mean... It, it just, well, it, here it, it is. Here, here, here. In one of these cases that I read, uh, somebody said he attempted to kiss me. Well, wait a minute. That that's what we call the approach. And if you say no and he stops, then really he did the right thing. You know, 
my aunt used to squeeze my cheek. I think I was abused. You know, so, oh, you're so cute. <laughs> Somebody the other day is I put this uh, this conversation that I had had with Netflix on my on my Facebook page, much to my desire not to involve myself in my Facebook page, but I did, and people wrote after that, and one of the people and I can't remember his name now wrote, and I I don't have the uh, uh, the whole thing. Do I is is it here? Because he was really just spot on with what he had said. Crosby. Huh? Crosby. Uh, yeah. I think his name was Crosby. Yeah. He returned the end of the threat. Yeah. What? Uh, what, uh, what? Let me see here. What did? Uh, what did it say? Um, uh, I don't have it here. Do you have it there at all? Um, um, because he 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 put it very well. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Again here, Cosby, 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 Cosby. It's funny his name is Cosby. Uh, uh, Crosby. Crosby, Crosby. Let me see here. Uh, I don't see it here. Why don't I see it? Could it have been that far up that I don't see it here? Crosby. Oh, yeah. John Crosby. Yeah. It's in the middle. It's in the middle. Why don't you read it for us? Okay. Uh, it, you... it, it's a little long, but... Um... So let me get this straight. Yeah. Any random woman or man can totally destroy the life and career of the most talented, productive, and creative people among us in 10 minutes simply by making an unproven accusation about an event that supposedly happened decades ago and may or may not have involved an actual sex act. In addition to Spacey, Mark Halperin uh, had had every one of his projects, um, book TV shows canceled almost instantly after only admitting to, quote, hitting on women who worked for him decades ago. Uh, he denied any non consensual sex. What about all the bosses who married their? Okay, now here comes the good part. Listen to this. What about all of the bosses who married their secretary? as Jack Welch did. Didn't they have to, quote, hit on their underlings to obtain the first date that eventually led to these marriages? Aren't they all guilty of improper conduct in the workplace, and should all of their lives now be destroyed? The lack of proportionality and rush to judgment is as bad as anything I've ever seen. That's very well stated. I, oh, I, absolutely. Yeah. Don't dip your pen in the company ink. That'll keep you. That'll keep you clear. It, well, that was always the saying, and and and, uh, but you know, I mean, I you know, I, I've I've said before that I've been trying to think about my life and have I ever done anything, blah 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 blah, and then I said, you know, there are any number of women who could probably claim something against me that isn't true. You know, everybody that you encounter in life can claim those things. No one is uh, is immune from these claims and they can come 20, 30, 40 years later and and uh, you have no idea and it could have been an innocent consensual thing but at some point in their mind they decided it wasn't consensual because it didn't wind up in the marriage and so therefore well, uh, well Jack Europe. Welch at some point had to come on to this woman that he married and, and and so could he not have been considered harassing her at that point if she wanted to interpret it that way? But she wound up being Mrs. Welch, and so she got the prize. It was immaculate conception. Yeah, yeah, no, but, you know, all I'm saying is that, it, yes, Kevin. It, it kind of brings up exactly what I was talking about the other night when I was going through my sexual harassment training at where I used to work. And exactly those things that Patrick was talking about were the things going through my mind when I was taking that training. And I'm going, because I, oh, I had a crew of eight, and one was a woman, and then we had another woman that came in. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, I walked on eggshells all the time. And exactly what you wanted to say, you know, I like your hair today, or I would stop. I wouldn't say it because I'd gone through this training and 
all those things made me step back. And I, I think right. that's bullshit because you should be able to compliment someone and be able to, you know, have someone accept that compliment. But right now, the way the, the, the atmosphere is now, it, it's not going to be that way. Right. And did anybody bring up Corey Feldman, too? What? Corey Feldman? No? Oh, oh, yeah. Once... He came yes. up this morning. He was uh, abused he... as a, a child star. Yeah, he, he was on uh, that was uh, impossible uh, Today was... Show and then uh, on um, Megyn Kelly's show this morning. Well, he he says he's trying to raise $10 million to do a film on the five people, and he won't name them yet, but he's got five people in the books. That when he gets his ten million, he's going to do a film and spill it all yeah. out. Yeah, Corey Feldman, who has not had, has not had a career since who can remember well, when. It's kind of a whack job, anyway. Yeah, yeah. you know. But you, this is what's happening. They're coming out of the woodwork. Yes, Mike, you have your hand up. Yes. Uh, also, he's uh, he did a YouTube video. Also. Yeah, it's, it was all on, based on that same thing. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, it, it, it's getting to the point where I, I, I just think this is going too far, you know? It, it is. You know, I'm all for the, 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 the keeping an eye on sexual harassment and all that stuff, but where has all this been all this time between now and then? Yes. Jeff? Uh, it seems to me that Kevin Spacey, uh, the show that, that they're thinking about canceling or canceling it already... I remember, remember when that was in maybe the first season or the second season where they he actually went back to see the the prep school that he went to. And him being an adult now was there with a bunch of other guys who were his age and they were they had a a sexual relationship with them. Yeah, yeah. In no. this, in the show, and I mean, the world changes. Well, so you, you know, he, he, I, here, here was a, here was a thought I came up. I was talking with Shecky today about this, and, and I came up with this, this thought, uh, be it uh, uh, important or not. Uh, Harvey Weinstein is a pretty disgusting looking human being. <laughs> he's not only fat he is fucking ugly he looks like a, you know, the idea of the, start, the start idea Wars. of having to watch harvey weinstein in the act of sex even the thought of it makes me vomit okay yeah, exactly <laughs> now had that not been harvey weinstein had those women been come on to by george clooney would it be a different story? Yep. Yep. And are we not now going after Probably. guys who are ugly and this is the only way they could get laid? Probably exactly right. But, but, I mean, would Rose McGowan they're, have they're, exactly turned down George Clooney? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, Patrick. Well, and, and I'm waiting now for where the guys that were sexually harassed by the gorgeous women yeah. that may have been acting with, because it, it remind that type of thing reminds me of the teenage boy that is having sex with a teacher, and the teacher is a good-looking teacher, and he's only telling his friends to brag, and then all of that. I mean, it, that's inappropriate, but you never have that kid coming out saying. She she did this because it was wrong. He just bragging to his friends that he got late, you know. And it it what about like I said? What about the actors that may have been coerced into having sex with uh, some female actress that we all may look at and go, hey, you know what? If I had the chance, I'd be knocking boots. Well, he, you know, but, the thing was, I I used to my my big joke was at the time when this especially this one teacher down in Florida who was just hot. I mean, she was, I was getting an erection just looking at her on television, right? Uh, and, and she was having sex with these 15-year-old boys. And I, and they were then talking about, 
And you know what a what a horrible thing to do to a young man of that age, you know, <laughs> to put him through that kind of trauma. And I'm thinking to myself, the worst thing that happened to any of these guys was getting a chafed palm from high fiving everybody yeah. else in his class. You know, you know what else is is funny is I, I thought about this while I was watching the news. It was yesterday or today, maybe it was yeah, I think it was yesterday or whatever. Anyway, I was watching the news. And I find myself looking at the TV, and if a female comes on, the first thing that's going through my mind is, wow, I wonder what she did. I wonder how she got to where she's at. You know, that's what it's doing is it's feeding. It's feeding. Well, and you look at it and you go, well, if everybody else had to give Harvey a blowjob underneath the desk, I wonder how she got to where she's at. And I wonder how she got to where she's at. It, it puts bad things in your mind. Well, I, I, you know what I mean. Well, it's like every woman who ever benefited from Harvey Weinstein suddenly makes people suspicious that they had to blow him to get where they got. And exactly. and That's I quite I mean. frankly, I, I want to dissuade myself of any imagery of Meryl Streep blowing Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> Oh, you know, um, I'm That's sorry. I, I I just have to absolutely uh, dissuade myself of that of that. Im oh God, I'm starting to vomit. He can second. do much better than Meryl Streep. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, and Jennifer Lawrence, who didn't have sex with him, probably people go. I bet, bet she did. That's how how yeah. Harvey how she you know well, that's what I mean. Harvey. It's she got an Academy Award for Harvey. Mind. I think for a Harvey Weinstein film. Uh, you know. I mean, it makes your mind wander. Yeah, and I don't want to be suspicious of these women. And and quite frankly, if they did blow Harvey Weinstein to get a job, who am I to tell them how they are supposed to? You know, they have to live with that. I don't have to. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, but uh, they have a choice. You, you, well, I mean, you do Except have. In the case you, of the ones that claim that he they he went in and raped them. Yeah. Physically just rape them that's that's a different story yeah i mean yeah. Uh, yeah. but in the case now, i don't let, know if let, that's let, true either let's go back to kevin spacey for a second in this particular case this boy this boy wasn't even raped right Har uh, you know, he was he, laying kevin, in his bed he, he was laying in his bed kevin came and jumped on top of him he squirmed well, away getting out from underneath him and just left who would have even thought that there was a 14-year-old in his bed? Maybe he just went in and jumped into bed, and the kid was there under the covers, you know? And no, no, it was he wasn't under the covers. He, he was in there watching television. All right. According to the kid, according to the description of the guy, I'm trying to remember his name now. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Kevin Spacey was shit-ass drunk. He probably didn't even know it was a 14-year-old kid. It was just even a human if, even body. Even if he did. Maybe he thought he was just being uh, fun and 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 gregarious and you know. Or in his drunken bed. stupor, he thought that by the kid lying on his bed watching television, the kid wanted something from him. It yeah. might you know. have even been a sexual and, thing. And we don't even know that it actually happened because if if Kevin Spacey can't remember it, and yet Kevin Spacey, I guarantee you, will never be able to work in this business again. Yes, Patrick. Well, to what Phil's saying. What if it wasn't just roughhousing? What if what if he saw the kid on the bed and knew him from the whatever? Well, he had... he supposedly picked him up. He picked well, him yeah, up. But I, yeah. I, I mean, that could be rough. I I'm, I'm thinking back to when I was a kid, and my uncles would do that. And pick you up, and throw you on the bed. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, and they pinch like your cheek. I mean, Did they I, pinch I, your cheek. I had an uncle Sam. Believe it or not, his name was Uncle Sam. We call I called him Ducka Mucka. I think that when I was a kid, and <laughs> and he used to love to roll around on the floor with me as a kid, wrestling with me. Yeah, you know, I, I, to this day, I never even considered that improper. Yeah. You know, I loved and him for that. I could really wait till he came over and we could wrestle. Yeah. Right. Now, now look what you're thinking. Well, now uh, now I'm thinking maybe yeah. he had a hard on. I don't know. You know. A little bit of grab ass. Ducka Mucka mm -hmm. had a hard on. That'd be yeah. my new book. It'd be my new <laughs> tell-all book. Ducka Mucka hey, had a hard on. Another chapter in the uh, in your uh, memoirs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, but I mean, the thing was, he according to him, uh, Kevin Spacey picked him up like he was a doll and picked him up and then put him down on the bed and got on top of him and then he just squeezed out from underneath him 
and left. Well, I mean, does this, is this something that should ruin a man's career? And it happened 30 years ago, okay? Didn't happen <clears throat> yesterday. And some he people are saying uh, the police are looking into criminal charges against Kevin Spacey. For what? It happened 30 years ago. I, I think the statute of limitations is way since passed. Yes, Patrick. The, the thing that I fear with some of this, and, and I can't speak to being a woman, but I think there are a lot of women, and you know, not to downplay this guy, but I, I would speak more. I would think more women would say that the statute of limitation may have run out legally, but the damage psychologically or physically is still there. And therefore, it's still legitimate, which I can buy. However, it needs to be proven. And this shit about throwing shit out to see if it sticks, it doesn't need to stick anymore. They're just firing people left and right, and like Spacey's show getting canceled. And I read on Facebook today a number of um, my left friends are making excuses for this by saying, well, they they were thinking of canceling it anyway, or they should have canceled it. No, no, actually, they were going to cancel the show after this next season coming up, but they weren't going to announce that till probably about the time the new uh, series went on, started to air. Uh, but they decided to do it yesterday after 12 hours of this story being alive. After 12 hours. And then today, they go a step further because season six is in production right now. They halted production. I mean... So I think, you know, to Patrick's point, it's prosecution by accusation. Kind of like what they did to Trump. Well, they, they kind of... Let's not go there. Uh, uh, Evidence. I mean, uh, I mean, this is a uh, you know. I mean, what 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 are you gonna what are you gonna say about all of this? I mean, it's just it's ridiculous. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, to quote Tim, it's Russian collusion. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. He's gonna call now. Watch. The, the, the Russians did this. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, Patrick. I had a, there was a woman that I worked with who was mildly obsessed with me. And I, I can't explain why, but it started with, I, I went to Disney World and I got a new tie and I happened to wear the new tie to work. And she wanted to see it. So I came up to the reception area and she made a big deal out of it. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went back to my desk. Well, apparently that little bit of attention mm -hmm. kind of grew on her. And there were only weird things that she would just show up by my desk or say weird shit, but I just let it go because she was a weirdo. Well, her boss finally had to step in, not that I asked for any of it, because she had a little cutout paper doll of me that my department had used for a, uh, it was a mock-up for a um, uh, design thing. Well, she stole the little paper doll, made a bed for it, and made a diaper that had uh, pee in it, and she was changing the diaper, and her boss saw her. Holy shit. And said, what the fuck is this? Patrick, and, do you yeah, have her number? <laughs> uh, and I would, I would call in and, and ask, did I want to do anything about this? And I said, no, she's just make sure she knows that, that I didn't even know about it. You know, just I just her, what up? you want a pair of pants on the doll. <laughs> Actually, I mean, it, it was a fully clothed, you know, miniature version. But I look at that and I go, she would just fucking weird i'm not yeah. gonna do anything to ruin her life over some weird shit that she made a fuck away from. you know maybe she thought she was being cute you know uh you know well, some people don't understand boundaries that's the point yeah 
That's the point. Well, yeah. all, all I'm saying is that I, you know, as somebody who's in show business or was in show business, um, uh, it, and, and I'm sure if I was still really famous today, some woman would come forward right now in this harassment craze that we're going through. It's like a fad, you know, and accuse me of something, you know. Uh, uh, I might even be somebody I never even had sex with, but they would claim, oh, you know, he came on to me, he tried to kiss me. Well, of course, I mean, if I'm with somebody and, you know, you, you think maybe there's a chance, maybe there isn't a chance, you make the approach, right? Usually I didn't do it until I was sure that it would succeed, but because I didn't want to get depressed over the fact that I had been rebuffed. But a few times in my life, I went for the kiss, and the person turned their cheek or something like that. And, you know, that was that. I didn't try for the second kiss, okay? But somebody could say, as have some of these women about, oh, say, Mark Halpern, well, he, 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 uh, he, he tried to kiss me. You is, know, is that the- harassment? I mean... Or, or, you know, I know women that if you didn't try to kiss them, they'd look to see if they had spinach on their teeth. Right. You, you, know? Say, you know, some women What's say, wrong hey, with me? Know, right, exactly. There's a lot of women that are waiting for the first uh, 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 attempt, and they're, and they're looking for it. And if you don't kiss them, they, they think there's something wrong. I mean, I was, I was terrible, so terrible at, at, at trying to get a sign, trying to get a... Uh, an idea of whether they wanted to or not, that people say they, they could have put brought out a sign that said, fuck me, and you wouldn't know what to do. No, you know? I thought, because I, I was always for, very hesitant to try the approach. The sign you were looking for was the mirror with the fog on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you, well, you get them drunk enough, and you hope they pass out with their mouth open. You know what? You know, I mean, no. no and, and to women listening to this, you know, this is not to demean any of the women who have been hurt, raped, uh, uh, and, and and put in, in, in uncomfortable Arch, positions, maybe. even uncomfortable oh. positions. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't countenance any of that. But the fact is, where do we draw the line? I mean, and if George Clooney had tried to fuck Rose <clears throat> McGowan, do you think she would have turned him down? I don't think so. You know, but an ugly asshole like Harvey I, Weinstein, my God, you'd want to vomit in your mouth, you know? She yeah. wouldn't have turned him down if he had drugs. Yeah, well, now we found that out because she's on the wanted list. Uh, yeah. Yes, Patrick. Um, two things. I think paralysis saved me from um, overdating. At, at being, <laughs> um, I, I shouldn't say overdating with um, making advances because it's very hard to reach over to kiss somebody when all I can do is kiss their ass, literally. President Bush did it. So, well, <laughs> We, we went over that on Friday. But, yeah, um, and he's good at it. The other thing that you made me kind of remember here is when I was in the hospital after I got paralyzed, they, um, the help, the uh, uh, nurses Nurse. aid would have to lift me out of the bed or whatever. Um, and at the time, I was wearing diapers. And there's one nurse, she was very um, endowed, let's say that, okay? And she was very muscular as well. And she used to lift me up, and basically, I my face was buried in her <laughs> chest. And you know what she used to say to me? She used to say, now don't you go motorboating while you're there. Now, the thing is, <laughs> she knew... That was where my face was going to land just because of the way we had to lift. I knew it, and it just broke the ice. There was no inappropriate shit going on, but I bet now, I bet she would even get in trouble for that, for saying motorboating, because somebody in the hallway would be offended if they heard that, or another years ago in the room. I mean, give me a break. She was making me feel... I mean, imagine being an adult having your diaper changed to begin with, and all she was doing is interjecting some humor in an obvious way. I mean, my face was planted right between her breasts. I mean, well, all I'm know, all I'm saying is when we forward. when we get down to the bottom line on all of this, it's really terrible what it's going to do. For instance, to 
um, Kevin Spacey's I mean, career. I mean, he's had a good one, and I hope he saved his money, and he probably, you know, uh, can uh, uh, can now get on with his life in another way. But you know, uh, I I just think it was terrible. I think this will pass. Huh? I think this will pass. I, I, I don't. I don't think it's going to. I, I, I don't think it's going to pass. No, I, 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 no, you know, no. Reality has to set in. What, what's going on? I'll make you a bet that, a, a, uh, that a year from now, listen, witch hunts happen. Look, I, I, I was in on the biggest witch hunt of all time when I grew up during the McCarthy era, and uh, I, I went to the Hungry Eye one night, which was a club in San Francisco for people who don't know San Francisco, uh, where Erwin uh, Corey was playing. And they, the great thing about the Hungry Eyes, you had an opening act that were singers and, you know, somebody else that was a comedian. Uh, and my father and I went to see Erwin Corey. And he, uh, he said, by the way, you see the guy running the spotlight? I said, yeah. He said, you know who that is? I said, no. And he, um, um, what, what is why did my phone decide to sudden? Why did Siri suddenly decide that I was saying something? <laughs> what? what? Hello, Alex. Boo. <laughs> uh, I said, hey, but did the Hungry Eye move? I, it's on Broadway now. Was it down on Columbus what, before? No. no well, anyway, what? what, what it, oh, shut up, fucking goddamn Siri. <laughs> Jeez, almighty. It's anyway, a Halloween prank. Now, did you come on, Siri? No, maybe I harassed her. Maybe she's going to turn me in. I know I've harassed her. I I know I've rubbed rubbed the screen against my dick. Anyway, where are we? (laughs) We're talking about the hungry eye. Oh, yeah, the hungry eye. He said, you know, that guy is up there. And I said, no. And he said, and I forget the name of the guy. If I had a list of them, I would be able to tell you. He said, oh, he was one of the unfriendly ten. He was a ho- big, big Hollywood director, and now he's running the spotlight at the Hungry Eye. Hmm. You know, and and I got to hear several stories like that. Uh, there was a uh, there was a radio announcer, and I'm trying to remember his name now, uh, out of Texas, and he went to New York and became uh, very big at CBS. Uh, Henry John Henry Falk was his name. And he became very big. And at that time, the biggest guy in radio was Arthur Godfrey. And he was kind of known as being the, at CBS to being the successor to Godfrey. That is, if Godfrey's star started to sink, they were going to put Falk in there because Falk had the goods. And Falk was a, a really good guy. And I, in fact, I had him on my radio show years later. And he got accused by a, a group called Red Channels. Red Channels was a, mag, a, a, a pamphlet that was put out once a week by this guy who owned a series of uh, s- supermarkets or grocery stores. But he had so many grocery stores that he was literally financial gold for the, for the networks and for the local stations and so on. And he put out this list of people who were suspected to be communists and uh, you shouldn't hire them. And somehow John Henry Falk got on this list, and the next thing he knew, the next day by CBS, he was fired. Because if you if you went into into a, a person's office there to get a job, they would always l- look in their in their uh, drawer and open up to see if your name was in red channels. Hmm. And. If your name was in Red Channels, you didn't get hired. And John Henry Falk all of a sudden made Red Channels. Why? Well, it was basically because of something he never did. They said he he had appeared at some fundraiser or something, and he just happened to be there because his girlfriend was going to it, and uh, he just wanted to keep his girlfriend happy. All right? But he wasn't a communist. But he was accused of being a communist, lost his job at CBS, wound up having to go back to Texas and try and find what radio job he could find, being an accused communist by this group of people. So finally, he got together with a a lawyer by the name of Louis Neiser. And Neiser was one of the best lawyers of this sort in the business. And he filed suit against Red Channels, which was owned by this guy who had these grocery stores, these supermarkets across the East Coast, and sued them. 
And they, of course, couldn't prove anything, but they had ruined John Henry Falk's career. And John Henry Falk got the largest libel judgment in the history of the United States at that point, which was only something like $3 million. But back in that day, that was a lot of money for a libel judgment. Put the uh, supermarket guy out of business and closed down Red Channels. But for years, Red Channels kept people from working. Actors you know of couldn't work television. I mean, people like uh, uh, Zero Mostel couldn't work television. Because he was, was on that uh, list. He was blacklisted uh, uh, during the uh, the trials, right? No. no Zero no. Mostel. No. There was no trial. Uh, there was no trial. There, Zero Mostel made the... Ma communist trials that they had? There, there, was no, uh, there was no communist trial. There, was a, uh, there were trials against the Unfriendly Ten in Hollywood because they refused to testify. Yeah. And so and they had Zero to spend... Mostel one of them? No, Mostel wasn't one of them. Uh, Jules hmm. Dassin was, who didn't ever the move, move, went over to Europe and made the movie Never on Sunday because he couldn't get employed in Hollywood. Uh, uh, Dalton Trumbo was one of them, uh, and he uh, he eventually, you know, was a, he he was able to come out of the uh, out of the woodwork because years later he wrote the screenplay to Spartacus. And they were going to use a phony name on the screenplay because, you know, he had been blacklisted. And Kirk Douglas said, absolutely not. I'm producing this picture. Your name goes on the screen because it's that good a script. And so that's what broke the Hollywood blacklist. But, there, no, that was a different thing altogether. But, the, but this was Red Channels. There was just a pamphlet that came out once a week saying who the suspected communists were. And so when I see that happening and you say Kevin Spacey will work again, I think about that guy running the spotlight at the Hungry Eye and going, you this know. Is, this is 2017. This is also, not, uh, also, also, okay. also, it, it takes the velocity out of somebody's career. You know, the case of those directors, they had a velocity going. Jules Dassin was a major director and writer of films at MGM. Well, I see the movie he did with uh, Dirk Bogart, I think. What? Jules, Jules Dassin. He did a movie with Dirk Bogart, that name popped up. I don't know if he did a movie with Jules Dassin, but he did Top Copy, and he did Never on Sunday, and uh, he did uh, a couple other films, too, in Europe. Yes, uh, well, let me see. Who do I go to first? Uh, 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 Jeff, you had your hand up. We'll do Jeff and then then, Tone, uh, then, then uh, uh, Patrick. Yes, Jeff. Oh, your mic isn't on. You have to consider yeah. that, that the president will he'll say anything he wants to say. And, you know, there's a number of people who believe what he says, whether it's true or not. Yeah. And, and nobody has the chance to fire him on that yet. Yeah. I'm wondering when the first sexual harassment charges are going to come out against Trump. Because <clears throat> I'm sure... I'm sure somebody malaria will do it. Mal <laughs> malaria I will do it. He could be prosecuted while, while as a sitting president. Well, we're not talking about prosecution. We're just talking about <laughs> getting the taint on him. They, they've already come out. Uh, yeah. They came out uh, during the they haven't, they haven't, uh, campaign. None of these people, none of these people we're talking about, have been charged with anything by any legal authority. The accusations came out. The accusations campaign. came out. And all of this is by innuendo. And even, uh, you know, you've got the Cosby case that's going on, but that, that's the only one that's going on at all in any way, shape, or form. And wasn't that supposed to happen within three months, and it's three months now, and we still haven't seen it happen? Three years. Yes, Patrick. Um, and this is not a sex-related thing, but, you know, you talked about stunting... A, the momentum of a career mm -hmm. in that. Yeah. Look at Mel, look at Mel Gibson when he got drunk and started spouting the anti-Semitic stuff. Um, his career went to a grinding halt, and it took him what five, six, seven, eight, nine years before he could get another real acting job or directing job. I mean, what? you know, and that was just. I'm not saying that it, it's a good thing, but 
that would get him misspeaking. Whether or not those are his true feeling, being anti-Semitic or he was drunk, that wasn't even sexual harassment or anything. Um, and he lost it for, what, almost 10 years. Yeah. And I think you're right. I, I don't think Spacey would come back from this because this is much worse in the public's eye than saying something stupid. Yeah. Yes, uh, Mike. I lived in a McCarthy uh, hearing last for about a year. <clears throat> oh no, McCarthy. Mac well, you, people have to remember th 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 there were there were two separate things, and they mixed them up. An American activity. There right? was the House on American Activity subcommittee. There was the House on American subcommittee oversight hearings on Hollywood. Okay, and then there was the McCarthy hearings, in which it was uh, McCarthy holding hearings into the um, in, in the the uh, uh, communism in the army. Basically, it was the Army McCarthy hearings is what it was really called. And uh, uh, so uh, they called the McCarthy era because the McCarthy uh, hearings were so pervasive in this country that television, which was still a new medium at the time, found it a good source of free programming. And they ran them all day long whenever they ran. And uh, so that's why it's called the McCarthy era. But it's the era of McCarthy, but the House Un-American uh, Subcommittee uh, uh, was a whole different uh, brand of that thing. The one on ho Hollywood, and that wasn't the one that uh, Zero Mostel got no. his blacklist from? No, he got blacklisted by, by Red Channels. Uh, yeah, well, I also read that he was blacklisted by M MGM Studios. No, he wasn't blacklisted by MGM Studios. MGM Studios wouldn't hire him. Uh, okay. You know, you got blacklisted by every every uh, studio in Hollywood because they all, at one point, went in front of the House on American Activity Subcommittee and said, "We hate communism. We we will never employ a communist in our ranks." Now, so, if, if somebody was, was even accused of it, was even accused of it. Right. You know, and that's what's happening here. And so, Reagan, Reagan uh, testified, and and didn't he? Uh, uh, Reagan uh, was a fucking communist. I know, but didn't he? He <gasps> dropped dime on other commies. Huh? Uh, didn't he drop dime on other commies uh, in, in yes. that sub? Yes, he did. That's yeah. how he got him because he knew he was going to have no career unless he suddenly yeah. came clean. So he started naming names. And therefore, he was a good guy, all right, because mm -hmm. he named names. But if anybody was a communist, it was, it was him. Because, I mean, he was so far to the left that the left didn't want anything to do with him, you know. And uh, he, was, he was basically a communist. Uh, he was the first person to ever become president of the United States who was a former communist. I don't know that he was a communist. And was mo he? Oh, well, he was a communist, and he was mobbed up. Let's add that one to the bunch. Uh, let me ask you this about wait, Arthur Godfrey. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're changing the subject. I just said <laughs> a former president of the United States was mobbed up. Well, he was a union guy. They were no, all mobbed no, up. No, well, the, the, the union was part of it. But before that, when he couldn't get work, he went and had was represented by an a. a literally an organization that was run by the mob called MCA. Mm -hmm. And MCA later became a little more legitimate and later became universal. But MCA was an agency, and they, they hired him, and he started making universal pictures, as a matter of fact. And that's when his bedtime for Bonzo period. Uh, and uh, he was mobbed up like crazy. That's why he sold off pretty much the uh, the actors union uh, he he was making all kinds of deals with the studios that were bad for the actors you know so i mean he was mobbed up to the hilt and um you know i just you know it, it, he was a terrible terrible human being not to mention the fact that he was fucking nancy while he was still married to jane wyman yes uh, uh jeff yeah so my question is with uh, Julius, uh, the guy who was uh, uh, killed for being a communist. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, you mean the Rosenbergs? Rosenbergs, yeah. yeah. What was the what was the cause of him? I mean, I, I know I know that theoretically he gave 
the Russian uh, people uh, information uh, uh, on, uh, on uh, uh, our equipment. I'll tell you here. This is a uh, the Rosenbergs uh, open to a lot of speculation. Uh, they may have well done something wrong. We don't know, but their cousin, I think it was a cousin. Yeah, I'm trying to remember his name now. Uh, was the guy who ratted against them, and he was the one that was re that really involved them in any kind of uh, spy work or whatever. And he, I think, didn't even go to jail, or if he did for a short time, but he never got executed because he right. turned them in. And they were they were they may have been if they were guilty of anything it was as being lesser players in all of this, you know. And, and they supposedly were giving away nuclear secrets, which they didn't have any uh, ability to get. Well, uh, you know, and they they uh, s executed the Rosenbergs. Uh, Ethel would have they would have saved Ethel's life. She said if she had turned on Julius, if she had ratted on Julius, and said yeah he did it, they would have saved her life. But she wouldn't do that. And so she died with her husband in the electric chair at Sing Sing. Um, aided in a, and the part of the uh, aiding and abetting of that conviction was a guy by the name of Roy Cohn, who, uh, who, I, who I once said to him, how do you feel about killing the Rosenbergs? And he said to me, very good. You know, uh, the evil guy. God, I can't, I never. Wasn't he a gay guy also? Yeah, he was gay. Oh, was he gay? And he was also Trump's mentor. He was a terrible human being. I thought he was Trump's lawyer. He was uh, also his. He was also his mentor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now I wanted to ask you about Arthur Godfrey. Now Arthur Godfrey. That's funny was, that you should you know, mention Arthur Godfrey because now we have very a little people, very few people listening to us at this point. At one point I had more people than I normally have when I was doing my monologue. And now we're down to <laughs> almost nobody. And, and now you're mentioning Arthur Godfrey, which I doubt anybody in this audience knows who we're talking about. He, he was known oh, I, to be an anti-Semitic. Uh, and now, is, was this true? Uh, you know, I mean, he, he was a little bit before my time. I have no and, idea whether he's an, an anti-Semitic, but I did find out today who was an anti-Semitic that amazed me. Yeah. Martin Luther. Not Martin Luther King. Martin yeah. Luther, Luther was an anti-Semite who preached anti-Semitism that encouraged and inspired the Germans. Did you know yeah. that? No, I didn't. But I would imagine, you know, they all blame the Jews for killing Jesus. He was just one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, the, but Arthur Godfrey supposedly had a hotel on Miami Beach. And there was a sign at the, at the pool that said, no Jews or dogs allowed. And... This supposedly was uh, the doing of Arthur Godfrey. Uh, and I'm just wondering, you know, because it was before my time. Uh, I, I've, never, I've never heard that, but I, I do remember growing up in Marin County and in Fairfax, there was a place called Marin Town and Country Club. It was a yeah. country club. And uh, Jews weren't allowed. Well, yeah, yeah there's still in a lot of places that's, uh, you know, it's not that they're not allowed. They just don't get chosen. <laughs> they're I mean, not the chosen I think we were allowed people. we were allowed to work there because I, I believe I remember vaguely working there for a couple of weeks as a pool boy. But that was then about they it. Found out you were Jewish. Yeah, and they found out I was Jewish. <laughs> yes, uh, Patrick. Um, your viewership may not be there, but your comment section is pretty interesting. Oh really? I haven't I, I haven't been reading it. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm about ready to blow a gasket. So. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. They're blowing a gasket. Yeah, she's about ready to blow a gasket. I think. Who? Renee. Oh really? Why? What she <laughs> What she blowing a gasket over? Um, women are never waiting for a man to kiss them and and all of that sort of stuff. Of course they are. <laughs> Call in, Renee. Hey, yeah. I, I, I mean, uh, uh, all, all I got to say, yeah, Renee, yeah. is uh, if uh, I make geez. the attempt and I'm then rebuffed, uh, I feel bad, you know. Uh, if uh, if there's a guy that you kind of want to have come on to you 
and he doesn't want to, doesn't that make you feel kind of bad, you know? Meaning that, you, yeah, you wanted the past to be made, you know? I mean, I don't know where, you know, where the line gets drawn. I mean, we are dealing here with human beings who have feelings and who have desires. All we're talking about is the aggressiveness of forcing somebody into doing something they want to do. But if you make the attempt to kiss someone and they don't want to be kissed and they kind of rebuff it and you stop at that point, then I don't think you've done anything wrong. You've just gone, I well, I got the vibe that maybe she might have wanted to have something to do with me. You know, but, uh, you know, I mean, is Renee, how's Renee blowing a gasket? And why, yeah. why isn't she calling the show to blow a gasket and make it interesting? Well, it, just some of the stuff that she's writing on. Well, okay. you know, I've often thought of Renee as a female chauvinist pig. So, you know. No, she won't call it. Well, no, I mean, she really has an attitude about guys that I find breaches. Uh, uh, on, it's, on it's that white guilt. You know, it, it's that it, it's the white guilt. If you're white, you're bad. If you're a guy, you're bad. Uh, nobody can be right. Yeah. And, and I mean, uh, nope. hey, hey, most, you know, and, and by the way, might I say that guys were always expected to make the first move, weren't we? And pay the check. Which I always found was very oppressive because I, I really wished women would make the first move. And most of the time. You know, they maybe they would have if I'd waited long enough, but they, they you know, they, they, yeah. if we look like George Clooney, they do yeah. make the first move. But don't get mad at me, Renee, because <laughs> believe me, I don't think, sense. I don't think there's a woman I know that said, could ever have said I treated them wrong, you know. Uh, and, and, and proof of that is I still talk to all my wives, all right including the one I'm currently married to, but less than the rest of them. Anyway, uh, yes, Patrick. Um, you know, I, I've been approached by women that I've had no interest in. And, you know, you, you let them down easily. You know, you just say, I'm, I'm not interested, or you lie to them like they all lie to us and say, I'm already in a relationship. Yeah. I mean, how many times have any of us guys heard that shit? And you know it's not true. Or well, I've already got a boyfriend. Bullshit. Show me a picture. You know. Well, well the, wor <laughs> the, the worst rejection. The worst rejection. I mean, the worst, you know. re worst, worst rejection w that I ever got was uh, this woman that I was um, I was trying to come on to. You know, and I was having a pleasant conversation with her, and she said to me, "Are you married?" And, uh, of course, you know, that's always the question you ask. Uh, you don't want to go if you don't want to go out with a married man. And I answered her very uh, honestly, no, I'm not, which was true. And uh, she said, well, I've got this mother at home, and I think you'd really like her. Or <laughs> I'll go out with married men. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I went, well, there's no chance here, uh, you know. Uh, so anyway, it, you know. I, but all I'm saying is I've spent my life not wanting to make women feel uncomfortable, you know. And if I felt that a move I made on them made them feel uncomfortable, I felt terrible about that, just terrible about that. Uh, and, and therefore, I, I usually avoided any situation of that sort. And as I said, a woman would have to send up a flare to let me know she wanted to kind of pursue the relationship. <laughs> And, you know, if truthfully, if you're if you're in a situation where you're talking with somebody, you feel that you, know, you want to uh, you, you want to give them a kiss because of the way the conversation's going and how, you, you know, the chemistry that's there. And then the, if they rebuff it, then you just say, oh, gee, I'm sorry, I got the uh, wrong signal or uh, and you and you stop immediately. There should be no consequences to that. But that just the initial uh, uh, effort. Uh, seems to be drawing consequences. Basically, basically what we've been getting from most of these, these people who've been complaining is it's been complaints that this, Truthfully, per, that this you're person... In a situation where you're talking with somebody, you feel... Well, that turn down the audio. Jack, of, of Jack, 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 turn down the audio. Okay. There, there we go. Sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and turn on your camera. Uh, oh. Yeah. 
uh, all I'm saying is, is that that you know, a, 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 the, a lot of these guys like Heilman may have just you know come on to somebody, and when they rebuff them, he went the other way. But because he came on to them, that's what he's being found guilty of. You know, so I mean, I I I, I just. You know, maybe these guys are guilty of just heinous stuff, but let's prove it, okay? That let's prove it. Let, you know, I don't mind that Harvey Weinstein's never going to work again in this business, but let's prove it, okay? I, you know, if Kevin Spacey indeed tried to rape a 14-year-old boy, then let's prove it. But even the boy, guy isn't saying that he raped him. You know. How old was he again at the, at that time? Twenty six years old. Twenty six. Okay. Yeah. And wasn't he in at that time? Uh, was he gay at that time, or was I believe you know, I believe it, 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 the way he tells it is he's always had relationships with men and women, uh, but I think if he had if the pendulum were to swing one way or the other, I'm sure it was swinging more towards gay. Then towards mm. straight, okay. Yeah. Uh, you know what's crazy still about this Harvey Weinstein that he's they were all so quiet on this, and then as soon as somebody says something, it's like thousands of stories. Well, you know, uh, uh, let me and then we'll go to Jack because he's got his hand up. Jack Bishop has joined us. Um, uh, uh, the trouble with Harvey Weinstein is is that he was a terrible, terrible person. OK, people were in fear of him in Hollywood. People did not like him. He had fits of temper. He was not known as a guy everybody liked, but he was powerful. And so they put up with it. The minute that he started to show the weakness, the minute somebody made an accusation against him, the arm. then everybody jumped on him. It's like, you know, it's like. Uh, uh, the bully in school. Once that little kid comes up and finally punches him once, everybody else starts punching the bully. Uh, and I think it's because he was such an asshole that this is coming home to roost. Um, but, you know, we don't know that about these other guys. I, I don't know what kind of guy Spacey is. I've never heard anything about him. Uh, but as I say, I knew a guy who was his lover for quite a while. Yes, Jack. You know, we haven't had much discussion about this on the intersection. For some strange reason, these uh, sexual stories have just not surfaced on our program. But what I think is interesting, as you pointed out, Alex, uh, the, the idea that um, people shouldn't have their day of being heard about whether the the truth of the statements being issued against them is there or not. Um, and that is and that is so evil. That is so un-American. Well, you know what we do, though, is we give credence to the accuser mm -hmm. and do not give credence to the guy defending himself. That's mm -hmm. the problem. Mm -hmm. I mean... Uh, the first thing people were saying on my post was, well, Kevin Spacey admitted he did it. No, he didn't admit he did it. What he said was, I don't remember it ever happening, but if it did, because it might have been, I might have been drunk at the time, if it did happen, uh, I sincerely apologize for any grief, the grief that I may have given this kid. Well, why, don't, why do we suddenly believe the accuser, but we don't believe the person being accused? And if that's it's the case, spacious. we open up a whole you know, plethora of, uh, of, of uh, uh, that's not even the word I'm looking for, but we open up a whole crap. load of crap by, by believing the accuser over the, the accused. Who may say, hey, if, if let's say one of these accusers says, no, I never did that. Never. Never. Who are they going to believe? Are they going to believe the woman who accused him or are they going to believe him? And I think what's interesting about the Kevin Spacey story is if the kid had been 14 years old and straight and the uh, person coming on to him had been a woman 
I don't think we'd be that upset about it because what 14 year old boy that straight doesn't want to get laid? Well, we, we talked about that earlier with these teachers down in Florida. But, you know, the problem that I uh, that I have here is that uh, to begin with, um, this kid was at a party at like 11 o'clock at night because it was after the theaters had closed down. So it had to be <laughs> after 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And it was a party that was being held that he simply came to. Where were his, he's 14 years old and he was doing a play in, uh, at that time in another theater. Where the hell were his parents? No, they don't let me go out until a certain time. Yeah. And, and, and here's a drunken That's Kevin crazy. Spacey. He doesn't know this kid's 14 or 40. He's just seeing a body in his bed. And, uh, you know, I mean, if, if that's what happened. But we don't know that. We don't know this guy isn't just trying to get some publicity right now because he's on Star Trek. He could have fabricated the whole thing. Boy, you, just turn your camera off completely, Jack, because yeah. uh, it goes on and off, on and off, and that's kind of... You know what? You know, I kind of feel bad for the kid if it's true, of course. But what's sad is you, it's been it was over 30 years, I mean. Let's say Kevin Spacey was drunk that night, and he doesn't really know what happened. Yeah, I mean, right? well, let me put it this way. If, if Kevin Spacey says, I don't remember it happening, but I might have been drunk at the time, he can't remember it because he's drunk, then uh, how is how's he going to defend himself? I, you know, and plus, again, that. it's a he said, he said situation I'm in, which, in which you have to take the weight of this accusation against he's, Kevin Spacey. And no matter what he says, he's he's going to be thrown out to the, you know, just like uh, all these other people are going to be thrown to the wolves, you know. Um, all you have to do is be accused now and forget it. You, you lose your job or you're put on suspension or whatever. Can I ask you a question, Alex? Mm -hmm. Would it have been better if the kid or the adult now would have said, listen, to try to sit down privately and meet with him and express his feelings? Why make it so public? Like, say, listen. This well, is that's a another good question. And I think he made it public because he, sees, he, he sees the publicity a Rose McGowan is getting out of this thing. Uh, he's seeing the publicity a lot of other people are getting out of this thing. And he figures, hey, you know, uh, my career is doing okay, but it's not gangbusters. Let's see if I can make it be gangbusters by having everybody know who I am. What would happen if uh, Spacey sued him for defamation? And well, he uh, can, but how can you sue somebody for defamation it. if you can't even remember whether it happened or not? Yeah, but how can he prove it either? Well, he, he well, that's the point. And what we're going through here is a case of. How do you prove that this even went on in the first place? But Casey, but we don't give we don't give equal weight to Kevin Spacey that we give to the accuser, even though both probably have a rather shoddy memory of the event. I, I thought Spacey's uh, 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 response was a class response. Geez, I'm sorry. I didn't think I didn't. I don't remember it. But if it happened. I'm certainly, uh, you know, I want to apologize for it. That was no admission of guilt. That was just uh, a... You know uh, what you got to do uh, today, Phil? You got to hmm? just not admit it at all, okay? As Lenny Bruce once said, if your wife finds you cheating, deny, 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 okay? Right. You know, uh, the fact is that if you even try and make an apology, you then sound guilty on some level. And what he was trying to do was parse it into the situation as... I don't remember it. If this ever happened and you were hurt by it, I'm sorry. Yes, right. Jack. You know, one of the reasons, Alex, that I don't drink is unlike people who can say I did such and such and such and blacked out and can't remember a day of it. I re when I drink, I remember every stupid, asinine thing I did or <laughs> said. I got tired of going around apologizing to people. Yeah. Or for being an ass. Hey, Alex. Yes. I, you know, I can tell you, you know, I can get a little personal here. I can shed a little light on something, too. My grandfather had a drinking problem. And when he used to drink, two different people. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, two yeah. I know people. people. Sure, totally I know people. Different. And I remember that as a kid. It was almost like in the next day, he would have no idea what happened. 
I had this friend. I had this certain alcohol can take over and you can change you. I had this friend, Pat Sky, who uh, was a folk singer. And Pat, I, it was, when he would get a couple of drinks in him, was the funniest man you ever met. And when he got a couple more drinks in him, it wasn't as funny. And by the time he got a couple of more drinks in him, he was the meanest son of a bitch you ever there met. You, go. you know, you could just see there was this whole pattern. Uh, you know, that's why alcohol is so you know, questionable. I worked with a guy like that. He and I were great friends uh-huh. until he would start drinking. And and then one time he went past that, you know, that wall. Yeah. And the son of a bitch tries. He says, I'm going to kill you for what you just said. You and know, I, I, I brought up I, I brought up something on several occasions about uh, an incident in which uh, uh, in two incidents, actually, in which I, technically I felt I was raped because I did not want to have sex. And uh, I it was it was non consensual. All right. And uh, I notice you're smiling a little bit, Jack, but it's not funny. I mean, I, <laughs> no, uh, that's no, the re- I, but that's the I, reaction I, I get I, from I, people like I, Late. I relate to that, and I'll tell you mine if you oh, tell okay. me. Okay, well, well, I've told uh, before, so I'm not going to bore people with it here. But the point is that when I tell that story, people laugh, or people don't believe me, or they say, how can a guy get raped? I mean, unless it's male to male. And mm-hmm. I'm saying, it happened to me. I mean, I remember I was actually crying while it was happening. Uh, because I had broken up with a girlfriend. I didn't want to have sex with this other woman. She didn't want to have to drive all the way back down to San Jose. And I said, okay, you can sleep here, you know. And we had slept with each other in the past. But then um, in the middle of the night, all of a sudden, I realized she's sucking my dick. And I just kind of, no, no. And she kept doing it. And then she hopped on top of me in spite of the fact I kept saying no. Now, women... I, you know, I'm sure Renee would call up and say, oh, you couldn't get raped. You're a guy. Well, I'm sorry. You can. In fact, I'll tell you, if, if I were being physically, violently raped, most guys will know this, that's when you'll really get a hard on out of fear. You know, so, I mean, this whole idea that guys can't get raped, I just find that totally obnoxious. You know, uh, yes, Patrick. Oh, I thought you I thought you had your hand up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, comparable kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm helping out a woman that I knew who had been physically abused by this guy. Yeah. And she calls me and says, "I'm I'm fearful. I have no place to go. Yeah. Can I can I sleep on your couch?" Right. And I said, sure, because I knew them both. And I knew they fought like, if you'll pardon the expression, Arabs and Jews on Saturday night. Yeah. <laughs> and anyway, at some point in the night, she crawls in the sack with me. And like you, I woke up and she was giving me a blowjob. And, and, you know, I felt not only creepy about it. I was scared. I was genuinely scared. And uh, I only, if I was smiling, it's only because I said, yeah, brother, I know what you went through. But uh, uh, folks like Renee and some other women, like you said, can't believe that a guy can be violated. I mean, an erection is not always a thought processed event. Sometimes it happens just because you're stimulated. Either that or you can get it if you are frightened. Or you wake up with a piss hard on, and that's when you wake the old lady up, when you're our age. Well, no, you get a piss hard on, and they think you're horny, but you're not horny. You need to take a leak. Yeah. (laughs) Just gotta and then you go to take one of those leaks where you have to stand and stand like five feet behind the toilet and figure the trajectory, you know. Those were the days. <laughs> <laughs> sort of like that famous uh, uh, part, uh, uh, the story they did on uh, uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm when uh, Larry David got the high-pressure pee pills, if you remember that episode. Yes, right, right. But... Um, 
But I had a situation once that uh, you were talking about women turning you down. I had a situation where a woman I'd been living with mm-hmm. left me. Yeah. And uh, about four or five weeks later, uh, a woman, another woman that I knew from the same group of people mm-hmm. said, well, you know, since Margot left you, I, I guess you're probably kind of horny. Why don't you come home with me and we'll have sex? And I was in such a bad place. I told her, gee, uh, couldn't we just be friends? And from then on, the woman had absolutely no use for me because she'd been turned down. Wow. And uh, her, her complete demeanor towards me changed like 180 degrees. I was uh, one of the lowest people she'd ever met. Mm-hmm. And... and I could never get her to believe, because we talked about it a couple of times, that I was just not in a place psychologically where I felt comfortable with, uh, you know, just having, you know, slap and tickle sex. Yeah. Yep. But, you know, all I'm saying is, is that to those women out there who think that guys can't be raped uh it's not the same thing it doesn't have the same dynamic but it happens you know um i um what were you, what did you send me phil oh uh, just a cute picture that i thought you'd enjoy for later oh well i'll oh. go look at it later uh uh Oh, cute pictures <laughs> oh. and thank you mr bennett for Jeez. defending us men uh, against certain women who have attitudes about men, I have, I have gotten so tired. Well, you're that. working with somebody every night who has that attitude yeah, about. Yeah, I know, I know. She and I have gone a couple of rounds about that. <laughs> well, you I know? mean, I think there is such a thing as female chauvinist pigs. Sure. And and uh, uh, I, I, I think we're uh, get we're too old that if we were younger and better looking that there wouldn't be a uh, this restriction this uh, this uh, uh, you know w- w- you know the way you feel about it you know i i had friends i had uh, this one guy friend we we go into a bar and he was so good looking that women would come up to me to give me their phone number to give to him that, yes. that you know and and that's the way it is for some guys uh, you know, if, if and women will absolutely come on to those that they want. And, you know, this guy could have been in days of our lives. You know, matter of fact, he, he ended up becoming an actor. And well, if, uh, if you want to hear the ultimate story about that, Lenny Bruce did a routine about just such a thing. Yeah. Pointing out that, uh, uh, as, as Lenny said, uh, uh, your sister will jump over 10 uh, Percy Kill Brides from Ma and Pa Kettle to get to one Harry Belafonte, just as you'll jump over 10 Zazu Pits to get to one Earth. Well, boy, Kid. You're, you're naming people that it's nobody in this audience ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've I I the cobwebs. I, Come I, on. I, I mean, <laughs> Zazu Pitts, you mean the. the uh, silent uh, movie star? Uh, she, yes, she was. She was yes, in one of the greatest was. silent movies of all time uh, called Greed, directed by Eric von Stroheim. Fuck See, you, you nobody, nobody knows what I'm talking about, and you don't even know about Greed, do you? I. I have seen Greed. I, I uh-huh. heard of Zazu Pitts, and I knew she was a silent film star. Yeah, yeah. But I, I well, she was. She also, she also I, made I, it. She I, also I, made I, it into movies. television. She was on on some series in early days of television. Zazu yeah. Pitts. Well, yeah. I never listened to any of her silent movies. Oh yeah, yeah okay. But, <laughs> the, the, the Chinese have a respect for their elders that we could learn in this country. Yeah. As Richard Pryor said, you don't get old being no fool. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know. Yes, Patrick, your hand is up. Yeah, I um, just listening to uh, Jack talking about not being in the right 
headspace to be with somebody, that sort of thing. Um, about a year after I got paralyzed, I had gone out to a club with a number of my friends. Mm -hmm. They were just going out drinking and just, I forget what the, the occasion was, but I was hit on by two women that were very attractive that if I had been walking, I would have jumped at in a heartbeat. The problem was I didn't know where I was at physically mm -hmm. or mentally to take on, even if it was a one-night stand, because let me tell you, when you're paralyzed, you can't just hop in the bed. There's a process you need to go through. It takes me 10 minutes to get undressed. You know, and, and if they're in it just for a quick hop in the sack, it's not going to happen, you know. And um, so that, that was the first time I was disappointed in myself, but I realized that I didn't know how to deal with this because this was all new to me. Mm -hmm. Now, I know, I mean, now somebody wants to jump in the sack, that's great. I mean, I've had almost 15 years experience since, you know, but uh, that first year, you don't know what the hell you're doing. It wasn't a relationship that ended. It was a complete, total life change. So, you know, I can I can relate to that where you're just not in there. And boy, did I get some dirty ass rucks. You know, mm -hmm. I would turn let, let, me ask, let me ask you a quick question, Patrick. Do you, do you find that there have you had women come on to you because you're in a wheelchair? Well, and that's the thing is, is there are some women that. They want to have that experience just to check that one off. I'm fine with that. The ex of a friend of mine lost a leg, and she says you'd be surprised at the number of guys that come on to her once they realize that the reason she limps is because she has an artificial leg. Do you, well, you, the, you, remember, you remember? You remember? You remember? Hustler magazine had the letters to Hustler or the Hustler yeah. form, and there would always be letters in there about people who were going out with women missing a leg. Yes, Patrick. One of the things, and I mean, it should come as no surprise, but yeah. one of the things that a lot of women like about paraplegic men yeah. is. They are always on top. They are always in control. So, they can't run out of the room either. Well, and, and that, <laughs> that's true. But I mean, that was, that was the thing that... that yeah, come on, so glad. Just, I mean, that's what they liked, is being able to be on top. And, yeah. By the way, I just got a headline in, and I think that this is a... Uh, 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 there, there has got to be a joke here. I don't know what it is, but in tragedy, we always look for the joke. And what happened today in Manhattan was a tragedy. Okay. It's a Home Depot special. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, no, that is not. That's not the joke. And it, uh, the All other, right. the other right. joke is not. Well, there goes the deposit. You know, no, that's that, that's not the joke either. But I think we just found there's a joke here somewhere. It has just been announced that Uber said he was once a driver for them. Mm. Oh, now, I don't know what the joke is, but somehow that joke is just lingering you know, around, waiting to be told. Uh, I'm telling you, you know, this being a, almost the end of the show, it is your Halloween show. Yeah, uh, no, tomorrow. Oh, off. it is. I, How it, many kids have come to your door? We, had, I, we actually kids. had, I think, three sets of kids that came to our door tonight. That's it. I had a lot. That beats it by three from every other year. And then really? I've had to sit here and eat all the chocolate, but now that I've been on this damn diet, I ain't eating the goddamn chocolate, you know. Yeah. I think we had maybe five sets of kids. Yeah. We had about 20. I, I haven't had any, but they know better. Really? I had a lot of kids. Yeah. Well, I got about 20 I kids. Big. I the big. Anyway, that, that about winds it up for us. I guess you got to go, uh, Jack, because yeah. Jack Bishop and Amy <laughs> Amy Fisher are on next. Hey, sure. <laughs> 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 and Joe Buttafuoco. Yeah. Joe, Joe, Joe Buttafuoco. Yeah. Yeah. I always wanted to, I don't know, I, I was always hot for Amy Fisher. 
And somehow yeah. the only person I wound up with once at the Moonlight Bunny Ranch was Jerry, uh, uh, what's his name, Buttafuoco, Joey Buttafuoco. Jim Carrey. Uh, uh, it's standing between him and the guy whose Jim wife cut Bob off Bob. His, his dick. You remember that guy? Bobbitt. I had, Bobbitt. John, John Wayne Bobbitt. But I was standing because between Joey Buttafuoco and John Wayne Bobbitt. And I always wanted to say somebody, I wish I had that picture so I could say, which one of these isn't a sleaze ball? Uh, anyway, <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thanks to uh, 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 Phil for being with us. And thanks to uh, uh, Patrick for being with us. Thanks to Mike. Thanks to Jack. Thanks to Jeff. Thanks to Kevin. Thanks, Anthony. Always, uh, and, and congratulations on your new dog, but we'll talk oh, about yeah, him some, show other, your picture. Yeah, some other night. Uh, I'm Alex Bennett. That's it. Wave goodbye, everybody, because that's it for us. All right? Okay, there they go. That's the citizens panel. That's what they look like. That's what they sound like. Now that, that uh, citizen panel is a thing of the past, and we go on to our next citizen panel again tomorrow night, same time. Same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye, everybody.